بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In our previous class we discussed some very very important principles with regards to understanding the proper and correct creed and to knowing the right and true belief. And uh, we studied three principles. Who can remind us of the first principle? Aha, um, uh -huh. that the creed and the belief and the knowledge about Al-Islam is derived from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Is derived from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Not from dreams, not from people's minds and what people think and what people like or what people find to be good and the likes like this, but rather it is derived from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah. And from the Sunnah. This point is very clear, insha'Allah. Okay, the second principle that we studied. Hmm. Anybody can text? Aha, um, uh -huh, that al Islam is complete. The religion is complete. What does that mean that, that it's complete? The religion is complete. What does that mean? Mm? You cannot add to anything. Aha, uh -huh, you can't add to it. The, you don't have it to add to it. it. Right, you don't have to add to it. It doesn't need any additions because it's already complete. So to add something and put something on top of something or to bring something else uh, to something that's already complete, this is, like, this is in reality making it bad and making it deficiency. That addition to something that is already complete is in reality a defect and not good. Okay, also that means that since the religion is complete, you can't add to it and also you cannot hmm, take away from it. You cannot take away from it because it's complete. So if somebody were to take something away from the deen and, and not follow it or not apply it or not believe in it, then this is bringing deficiency. And if somebody were to add to it, likewise, this, this is all deficiency, and this is all not correct, and this is all not right, and it's not good. And this is because the deen was complete. Who completed the deen? Allah. Allah, He completed the deen. Today I have completed your deen for you. What was the means? How was the deen completed? Through, through the call, and the da'wah, and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who did he teach and who did he call? His call was for all mankind. But who did he teach directly? Who learned from him right away? The companions. And they're the ones who believed in him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and followed him. And they're the ones who conveyed his sunnah to the people after, after them. To the people after them. So therefore we see based upon this the third principle which was. The Quran and the Sunnah is our source. And this is where we get our creed and belief from. And we learn our deen from. And that is complete. No doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Quran and the Sunnah. It must be understood the way they understood it. It must be understood the way the companions understood it. It must be understood the way the companions understood it. In, in this manner, this is the correct creed. And this is the correct belief. And this is the correct Islam. 
So whenever Allah Azza wa Jal, He praised Islam and He mentioned in His book, Inna Deena Inda Allahi Al Islam, the only deen with Allah is Al Islam. And whenever Allah says, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرُ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقَبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَاتِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever seeks other than Al-Islam as a deen or a way of life, it will never be accepted from them. And in the hereafter, they'll be from the losers. The Islam that is being referred to here is the Islam that Allah is pleased with. Is pleased with. And I'm pleased for you with Islam as your deen. What, deen. what Islam is that? The Islam that was completed on that day from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al yawma akmantu lakum deenakum. That the, the, the Islam that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught his companions. Anybody who comes with something other than that, adding to it or taking away from it, this is all deficiency and this is not what is correct. And this is not going to be accepted. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned an authentic narration. In an authentic narration, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, corrected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. What's that hadith called? A hadith that's collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Muttafaqun alayhi, mashaAllah, Allahumma barik. Naam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahuwa rad. That whoever introduces into this religion that which is not from it, and whoever makes something up and ascribes some actions or some statements to uh, al-Islam and it's not from it, it's not from the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it will be rejected. Then it will be rejected. You know, some people, they're doing like big, big deeds and they're doing all this effort. Some even spending money and the likes and time and they're becoming tired and doing these acts of worship. But they're not according to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are these acts of worship going to be accepted? Huh? No, they're going to be rejected because they have to be in accordance to the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have to be in accordance to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who knew what he was upon? Who was the one who knew what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon? Companions. The companions, radiallahu anhum. Therefore, their way is the criterion. Their way is the criterion. Because after the, after the, the, the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when people started coming and making up stuff, and making up stuff in the deen, and they made up these different creeds and these different beliefs, and uh, they added all this uh, strange stuff that the, camp, the companions didn't know about. And these are called innovations. And these things are very, very bad. And this is whenever the fitna happened. And uh, people started saying, where did you learn that hadith from? Where did you hear that uh, interpretation of the Quran from? And they started asking about that. We've seen the, the one who narrated that narration. Muhammad ibn Sirin. Uh, Rahimahullah ta'ala. He died in the year 110. Whenever the people started making up stuff in Al-Islam and saying that this is from the deen or they started making up hadith and they started lying on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At this time they started asking about who you learn from. Where do you get that knowledge from? Where did you hear that from? They used to take the hadith directly from the companions and the tabi'een and then people start lying. People start making up lies about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying he did this or he said that. Or they start misinterpreting the Qur'an. What does that mean? They start using the Qur'an as a proof, but they don't understand it the right way. And they understand it according to their desires. And they make stuff up. And they say, this verse means this, and this verse means that. Mm. Are everybody with me? Okay. Pop quiz. If somebody came along right now, and they are, are you, they said... They, they start doing some actions that we don't know about. And we say, what are you guys doing? They say, oh, we're worshiping Allah. You say, you're worshiping Allah? I never seen anybody worship Allah like that. Are, are you sure that's worship? They say, yeah, it says it in the Quran. Allah, he mentioned in the Quran like this. And then he reads the verse to us. And then we're like, wait a second, that sounds strange. I don't think that that's what that means. Uh, so he understood the verse one way and we understood it another way. How, was, how are we going to find out who, who is right? There's got to be some way to know which one is right. Allah's not going to leave us here like this just to make up our own understanding. There has to be some way to determine. Wait a second, who are we going to go back to? 
to check and see if we understood it right. Who's right? That man or us? Uh huh. Uh huh. We have to see in the narrations of the companions. Did they understand that hadith like that? Did they understand that verse like that? If they did, then this is the one that's right. Whoever, whoever was in accordance with the companions and their understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah, then he is the one who's right. Then he is upon what? Al Jama'ah. Then that's the Jama'ah. Okay? This is very important to understand. You know, in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, He has mentioned talking about the people of sound understanding. Allah, He says, Inna fi khalqi as-samawati wal ardi wa khtilafi al-layli wal nahari la-ayatin li-uri al-albab. That verity in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day. What does that mean? The alternation of the night and the day. And the night comes and then the day comes after it and the night comes and the day comes after it. The, the night never catches the daytime and the daytime never catches the nighttime and whenever it comes like this. These are all what? Signs for people of sound understanding. People who have right minds. People who think correctly and their brains are good. Huh? And their hearts are, are, are alive and their hearts are sound and good. And then Allah, He mentioned some attributes of those people with sound minds and good hearts. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Those people who remember Allah while they're standing and while they're sitting and while they're laying on their sides. Huh? And while they're laying on their sides. This is the description of the people of sound understanding. Okay, let's see. Some people now, you know what they do? They came along way after the companions and they read this verse and you know what they start doing? They start dancing. They start dancing around and they hop up and down and they go around and they dance around and it's called a raqs and, and it's called a raqs and even they have in books that they call books of the fiqh of the fiqh of the deen of Islam they have the chapter a raqs and the etiquettes of a raqs dancing dancing and then they dance around and, they da- and, the, and, and their imam he stands up and he dance around and dance around and then they make noises and then he gets really, really excited. Sometimes he'll dance around and dance around and dance around. He's going up and going down and sit down and stand up and he's moving around. And then all of a sudden, maybe his hat fall off. And he's dancing and dancing and dancing. And then somebody like, what are they doing? He said, they're worshiping Allah. They said they're worshiping Allah. What, what is the proof for that? You know what they say? The people of sound understanding, يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ the people of good understanding and minds, they remember Allah while they're standing and while they're sitting and while they're on their sides. Allah, He mentioned dancing in the Quran. What are you going to say? Allah, He said, they remember Allah standing, I'm standing, I'm sitting down, I'm on my side, I'm here and there. That's what they're saying. So they're saying, like, we move around, we're dancing, we stand up, we sit down, we get on our side, we move around all the time, we're remembering Allah. Wallahi, well, they say that and they have books about that. Hmm. What are you going to say to them? Dancing is from Islam? Uh, this is worship? This is dhikr? They say that they're in halaqat al-dhikr. They're in the, they're in the circles of remembrance of Allah. And they're dancing around and their imam is dancing around and they're following the imam. Huh? Wallahi, they do that. And they have books. Huh? I can show you. I have one of them <laughs> as a proof against them. Uh, we see it and read it in their books of falsehood. What do we say to them? We say, you can't do that. I say, yeah, you can. It's in the Quran right here, Surah Ali Imran. Surah Ali, Ali Imran. Right here, read it, read it. What are we going to say to them? That's how you understand. We say, wait a second. Okay, that's what you understood from the verse? What, what is the proof? What are we going to say to them? Ah, uh, we're going to ask a question now. Right now, it's time to ask a question. Are there any narrations from the companions Allahu anhum that they used to do that? And that they understood this verse like this? Huh? Is there? This is the question here. This is what we asked them. Wait a second. Okay, the, okay, you got the Quran. Alhamdulillah, they're using the Quran as a proof for their for their for their actions. This is a requirement. But is it sufficient just to use the Quran only? Or the Sunnah only? La. 
that Quran and Sunnah has to be restricted. The understanding of those texts uh, and the verses and the, and the narrations has to be restricted to the understanding of the companions. So before we base our actions or our creed or our belief upon the Quran and Sunnah, we have to make sure that that understanding and those actions and that creed is in accordance with as salaf as salih As salaf as salih We understand that? So then we look into the narrations, we don't find any of them dancing around and jumping around and, th- and like this. And, and in reality, even if you think about it, do the people of sound minds go around dancing around and jumping up and down and moving like this? And then, and you know, Allahu al-Musta'an. Huh? No, those people are crazy. That's not people of Ulu al-Albab. They say that that's Ulu al-Albab. The people of sound minds and good hearts. That they're going to gather together in the masjid and dance around. And dance around and make noise. And you know what? They even have adab, araqs, the etiquettes of dancing in their books. The etiquettes of dancing. And from the etiquettes of dancing, and he dancing meaning the afkar, meaning they're worshiping Allah. From the etiquettes of dancing, that if the imam, he dances so much that his hat falls off, then all the other people have to take their hats off because it's not good manners for the imam to not have his hat on and all of you people and the students to have their hat on. So if the imam is dancing around and his hat falls off because he's dancing so much and remembering Allah so much. (laughs) 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 This is the adab. Even they, they they all made, they made all that up. Oh, this is, they, they, oh, this is, what is this? Uh, this is Aqaid, Nabita. Wa'ibadat, Nabita. Nabita. They made it up. It, it came from the earth. They made all this up. I mean, alhamdulillah, we studied some manners together, right? Like, for example, we would say, wait a second, wait a second. Is there, are these etiquettes and, and the likes like this found in Al-Adib, Al-Mufrad, by Al-Bukhari? I don't remember that chapter. The chapter of dancing and the etiquettes of dancing. Yeah, in the gatherings of remembrance. So therefore, we see that it's very... Uh, easy for a believer who has these principles like this, these three principles, that the, 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 our belief and our deen and our creed and our understanding and our worship and our manners, all of this is derived from the Quran and the Sunnah. And the Quran and the Sunnah is complete. We don't have to make nothing up or bring anything else or take anything from it because it's complete. Allah, He completed it. And the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He conveyed it. And then also we have to understand the last one, very, very important in many, 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 many Muslims they're misguided till this day because they don't know these principles or they don't care about these principles. And, the, and that is that these, uh, this book, the Quran and the Sunnah, this revelation, it must be understood according to the understanding of the Salaf as of the companions first and foremost, and their students and their students, and their students and their students. And the Quickest and easiest proof to memorize for this is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, خَيْرٌ nas qarni ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best of mankind is my generation, the companions, and then those who follow them, the tabi'in, and then those who follow them, atba' tabi'in. Atba' tabi'in. This is very important. So now that you guys are dancing, okay, it's in the Quran, the Sunnah, okay, but we don't find this understanding and the narrations. Therefore, it's clear that you're upon falsehood. If you were upon the correct deen in the correct way that's pleasing to Allah, then you would be following the footsteps of the Salaf as salih And you would be following their narrations. And you would understand the deen according to them. And if we look into their generations and, and the generations after them and after them, we'll see that none of them knew about dancing. And none of them interpreted this Quran to have this meaning. Therefore, these people, they're misguided. These people, they're misguided. What is the point of their misguidance? Did they get their? Uh, did they get their understanding? For, uh, did they? Did they get their? their uh, are they deriving? Are their, are their sources different from the Quran and the Sunnah? No, they have the Quran and the Sunnah as a source. Huh? They're using the Quran and the Sunnah as a source. Okay, so how are they misguided? Because their understanding is Oh, because they have a different understanding, different than the way of of the companions, different than the way of the companions, and likewise, whenever the first one of the first deviant groups came, the Khawarij. And they started fighting against the Muslims and they tried to fight against Ali radiallahu anhu. You know what? They all went on this side. All these Muslims went over there and then all the companions were over here. And these people there are Muslims and these people are Muslims but they're companions. And they want to fight the Muslims and they want to, uh, they want to go to war with the Muslims and they're calling the, the companions disbelievers and they're calling Ali disbelievers. And then you know who went over there to talk to him? Abdullah bin Abbas, that young man radiallahu anhu. He told Ali, let me go talk to them for a minute. 
no, 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 they're mad. no, just let me go talk to them. I'm going to see uh, what's, what, what the problem is. So he went over there, radiallahu anhuma, and he talked to them. And the first thing he told them, he said, you know, I see all you people over here, and I see the companions of the messenger all over there, and I don't see none of them with you. You're saying all these things, and this, and the Quran is your proof about this. There's no ruling for except for in 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 the hukwila lillah like this. And but then he's saying, but you guys are over here, and this is what you claim, and you you're reciting the Quran. But I don't see none of the companions of Prophet Muhammad SAW with you. They don't agree with you. And what is he using as a proof against them? Ah, the understanding of the companions. None of the companions they understood this. So even the companions they understood that you have to have the understanding of the companions. You have to have the understanding of the companions. To, to further emphasize this, you know what? Somebody asked Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu about how to pray. About praying. Inshallah, we're going to take this hadith in Umdat al-Hikam. But they asked him about how to pray. When you stand and you recite the Fatiha, uh, do you say Bismillah rahman rahim out loud? Do you do that? And this is the question. Some people are asking. Anas ibn Malik, you know what he said? He didn't say, no, 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 you don't do that. He didn't say, no, no, you don't do that. Prophet Muhammad didn't do that. It would have been sufficed if he would have just said, no, I prayed with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he never did that. But you know what Anas said, radiallahu anhu? He said, I, I prayed behind Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And I prayed behind Abu Bakr. And I prayed behind Umar. And I prayed behind Uthman. And none of them ever said, Bismillah rahman rahim out loud. Who was saying that? Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, who is he? Uh, he's, the, he's from the Ansar, he's the servant of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lived with him for 10 years. So he's saying, that I, I did the, he, the Prophet sallallahu didn't do it, Abu Bakr didn't do it, Umar didn't do it, Uthman didn't do it. So then, what are you talking about? Huh? Right, right here, at this time, the conversation is over. How people, okay, these people want to keep talking, oh no, dancing, dancing, up and down, up and down. <laughs> Abu Bakr didn't do it. Uh, Umar didn't do it. Uthman didn't do it. Khalas, man, what are you talking about? Huh? Who, what kind of deen, what kind of Islam is that? Who, 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 who Allah must stand. Even I'm speechless. I don't know what else to say. May Allah guide you. Huh? Billah. Nas'al Allah al wa salama. Right? Khalas, it's a, it's a done deal. Right? They, they're doing something and they say it's, it's Islam, but Abu Bakr didn't do it? Radiyallahu anhu. Huh? Subhanallah. Omar, he didn't do it. Radiyallahu anhu. Uthman, he, he wasn't doing that. Ali, radiyallahu anhu. What, what kind of Islam is that? That's not Islam. Huh? No, we have to be very serious about this. And it, it's, In reality, it's a sad situation. The state of the ummah and the Muslims because of this. Turning away from the way of the companions. Asadif huh? al If If somebody's sincere about their Islam, then they will, they will, they will comply huh, to the command of Allah. And they'll follow the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the people who transmitted that, they're the companions. Radiallahu anhum. Radiallahu anhum. Anybody have any questions about that? Uh-huh. Okay. Now, if somebody were to ask, where are these narrations at? Narrations of the companions. Allahumma mm-hmm. barik. Senti. Naam, mashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. Naam, that's right. If somebody were to say, now, okay, you're telling us we have to go back to the, uh, to the understanding of the companions and the understanding of the tabi'een and the atba' tabi'een, where, where, where do we find that at? Where do we find that at? Mm-hmm. Al-Kutub al-Sitta, naam. First and foremost, Bukhari and Muslim. Naam. We'll find that in Sahih Bukhari, there's a chapter called Al-I'tisam. Al-I'tisam, holding fast to the sunnah. There's a chapter called At-Tawheed, all about the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla and Creed. There's a chapter of Al-Iman and the chapter of Ilm. And likewise, if we look in Sahih Muslim, there's a chapter called chapter Kitab Al-Iman, the book of faith and Iman. And they mention all these narrations with regards to faith and Iman and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the proper belief in the Jannah and the Nar. And all of these things are mentioned in these chapters with chains of narration back to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, in, in Sunan al-Nisa'i, or excuse me, in Sunan Abi Dawood, there is a, a refutation of a Jahmiya, the people who deviated. And likewise, in Sunan al-Nisa'i, there's a book called Kitab al-Nu'ut, the chapter of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
and Imam Ibn Majah, rahimahullah, he has a whole introduction to his book, Sunan Ibn Majah. It's, all, it's, it's a muqaddimah. It's all about holding fast to the sunnah and to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and creed. So therefore, we'll look back in the, in the Kutub al-Sitta. And likewise, there's other books as well. Books of hadith with chains uh, that, of narration that's collected that clarified the belief of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and clarified the understanding of the companions radiyallahu and whom, and early, uh, and, and early in the, in the in the earliest generations, the people of knowledge they had great great concern with this affair. Whenever the people of innovation started coming and making up new creeds and making up new innovations in the deen, they started really really working hard to gather the narrations, like Bukhari and Muslim and Abu Dawood and Nisa'i and, and Ibn Majah, uh, 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 Bukhari and Muslim, Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi. Huh. And the would imagine all, all of them, no doubt They have in their books Narrations about creed and belief But it's not specific there Whenever the deviations got very, very uh, Bad and, and it started spreading a lot The people of the Sunnah They started writing books specifically about creed But what are their books about? They say the chapter uh, About seeing Allah Azza wa Jalla in the hereafter And you know what they say? I heard so-and-so say that so-and-so narrated to me that the, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said this. And then he'll go to the chapter about the hold. Do you want to see the, the big uh, the hold of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Or the chapter about the attributes of Allah azza wa jalla. And then he'll just mention narrations. Narration after narration after narration to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, And to the companions and to the tabi'een in this manner. And these books here, they're called Kutub. Al-Aqaid Al-Musnada And this is very, very important Kutub Al-Aqaid Al-Musnada These are books of creed Books of creed, but they're books of creed that are narrated with chains Chains of narrations Meaning that these authors, they wrote these books specifically to clarify and to defend The creed of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions and they narrate in these books every single uh, point that they speak about. They mention narrations with chains. Chains back to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Chains back to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to the tabi'een and to the atba' tabi'een in this manner. So these books here, they are likewise a main source. These books here, they are main, main source for understanding the aqidah. Uh, because the aqidah, it comes from the Qur'an and from the sunnah. And these books here, they specialize. The authors have written these books here, specially to collect those narrations from the, from the Prophet wasallam, and the companions with regards to creed, with regards to aqidah, with regards to belief. These books are specific to this. Uh, and they're narrated with chains. So then if we see, we want to see, okay, you guys dancing around like that. Okay, we look over here. Wait a second. In the, book, in the Kutub Aqaid Musnad, they don't have that in these books. There's no chains that go back to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that he was dancing around. A'udhu billah. Or that the companions there dancing around like this. A'udhu billah. Up and down. All, all of this, this stuff, Allah al-Mustan. We're laughing. Even, even some of them, you know what they do? They don't, they, don't, they don't up and down, up and down. They just spin in circles. They spin in circles. Allah understand. And then, you know, you know, the worst part about it, if somebody right now just started spinning in circles, right? Some, some regular person, like a disbeliever or something, starts spinning around in circles in the street. What are you going to say about him? Man, this man's crazy. What is he, why is he spinning in circles for? Allah understand. What is he doing? Huh? You know what? These people are worse than that. You know what they do? They say this is Islam. They spin in circles and they say this is from the Islam. This is the way of Prophet Muhammad. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Oh, scoot. Be quiet. Don't say that. Huh? One thing is to spin in circles, but worse than that is to spin in circles and say that Prophet Muhammad did it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or that he liked it, or, or that it's from the deen of Allah. This is even worse. Huh? So in order to determine these affairs, uh, we have books. We have books that are, that are sources that are relied upon. What are they called? Books of Kutub? Huh? Al-Aqaid Al-Musnada. Al-Aqaid Al-Musnada. Huh? And we have several of them here today, but it doesn't look like we have time to discuss them 
Inshallah, we will see about that mm. in the next class. We will learn the names of some of these important books so that we are aware of them and we, and we know about them and we know where our creed comes from and we be, inshallah, upon clarity with regards to this. Mm. Look, for example, this is one of the first of them. Kitab al-Sunnah. <laughs> Kitab al-Sunnah by Ibn Abi Asa. I just opened the book. Huh? What does it say? Bab Abwaib sifat The chapter of, uh, the, chapter of uh, the descriptions of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And then what does he say? حدثني قال حدثنا محمد بن عوف قال حدثنا نعيم بن حماد قال حدثنا ولي بن مسلم عن عبد الرحمن بن يزيد بن جابر عن عبد الله بن أبي زكريا عن رجاء بن حيوى عن النواس بن سمعان الكلاب رضي الله عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحديث ها he doesn't say well it's like this because you got to do it like that or because it's like this oh this is the attribute of Allah it means this لا he said the attribute of Allah Azza wa Jalla. He mentioned the chapter, then he mentioned a chain of narration. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Huh? You want to talk about this? This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. This is how these books are. Like this. Kutub al Qaid al Musnada. Huh? So this is our source. And this is from the means huh, that Allah has decreed that the creed will be preserved. That the belief and the aqidah and the iman and the deen and Islam. The Islam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions will be preserved huh, by these men who collected these narrations and authored these works huh, until they reached us today. And the creed is pure and upright and sound and solid huh, with evidences uh, from the Quran and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the understanding of the companions. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.